Hello guys, Hugo here, hope you're well. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to fly the Quality Wing 787, 8, 9 and 10. The whole fleet is the same, it's just a different length. So I'll be showing you how to fly the Streamliner, also known as the, uh, the Boeing 787. So our route today for our tutorial, let's say, will be London Heathrow to Baltimore Washington International Airport. Flight time, well, it's going to be around about 7 hours and 20 minutes. So uh, we've got a realistic Dreamliner length of flight. You might be able to hear the engines are running. I've left the aircraft in the state that you might have left it to install in, basically. So when you run into the sim, or load the sim up, sorry, and you load this aircraft, it's going to load it in the engine's running state. I don't like that. I don't know why you would have that as default, but what we're going to go and do is this is what it shows up as. Uh, you want to go to the index page, load panel, and then cold and dark. And that will just shut down the aircraft, shut down the engines, power just gets lost, and it is in a cold and dark state, basically meaning um, the state that the aircraft would have been left in from the previous flight with the, uh, the power all turned off. So we're currently at stand 533, and I believe my Alex has just gone off, so uh, I'm not too sure what it's notifying me about. But uh, yeah, stand 533, uh, this tutorial is going to be a three-parter, just like my Flights and Labs tutorial. Um, my Flights and Labs tutorial was done up with the pre-flight taxi and departure, and then the approach and landing. So uh, this part one will be the basically everything up to pushback. As soon as uh, we have gone up to pushback, part two will be the next video you would want to watch. The 747 behind us is taxiing off to the active right now, enjoying its flight to somewhere. I wonder if I can use AI Companion to work out uh, what it's doing. And my guess is it is this one on AI Companion, which is here. And it's off to uh, San Francisco. Nice. Or it's this guy down here who's off to JFK. Not too sure which one it is. Um, wi Fi Dome and. Okay, that one has the old colours and this is the new colours, so I'm guessing that's that's the one with um, the new colours it should be. So I'm guessing that one is off to JFK. Anyway, so yeah, three parter. This is the pre flight video. The next video will be the taxi takeoff up to cruise. All of that lovely stuff. And then part three will be planning our arrival, the descent itself, and uh, parking up and shutting down. So, first of all, what you want to go and do is use Simbrief to calculate your, or not calculate, just get your flight plans through Simbrief because the Simbrief downloader is the most glorious thing ever. If you don't want to use Simbrief, then use PFPX, but copy all your data from PFPX into Simbrief, because then you would have all your PFPX stuff, but through a Simbrief downloader, um, so you can just export everything. So, what you want to export, uh, you want to export FSX slash P3D, just click this and it will export this file only button. Um, obviously, it should have already calculated the correct file format, and then you also want to go to the, to the quality wings. I don't know if it's going to be ticked or not. Just make sure it's ticked. And it should have automatically found it. Um, if not, then it should be on your prepared folder. Quality wings, QW787, and then flight plans. And what you want to go and do is just click that export. And it will export it as Heathrow KB... Um, well, the iCals for arrival and departure. And then the 01 and then dot to root file format. So... That is Simbrief. Basically, what that does is just gets your route and well, company route, as it's known as, into the aircraft, so things are a lot easier to be uh, added. Is it me or is that aircraft like moved forward? Because uh, I remember I put the wheel on that front bit just before I started the video. Now it's on the on that one. <laughs> Anyhow, so let's get started. Basically, what you want to go and do is well, you don't actually have to go in the cockpit, you just want to go and click either here or you can do shift plus two 
And that brings up this menu. So shift plus two, or just click here. You can see there's no clicks, but you can see the mouse gets activated. Just click there. You want to go and click external power. So it's got green, and then world shocks is also green. Um, and up here, it's a little bug in the quality swings at the moment. It's a, it's a shame. I think it's a bug with the Rolls Royce engines. I think I'm fairly certain it's fine when, when I'm running the General Electric. This is Rolls Royce. You can tell which one's Rolls Royce and General Electric because the Rolls Royce has got a very pointy spinner, and the uh, the General Electric engine um, has a very smooth dome-like spinner. Yeah, there's an old bug. Basically, if you click that, you get power. It's meant to say on here, in these two, this little box here, and this little box here, and when it's off, it should have say available. There's a way around trying to find out if you're on or off. Go to System, SYS, and then Electric. And this page, you can see your, your external power. If it's got a green arrow pointing down to the main electrics, then it's running. Um, so that's what you want. If you get that bug, you can just double check if it's on or off by down here. And the same is with the engine generators and the APU and all of that glory stuff. Once you first power up the aircraft, it's going to remind you of the 777, uh, where it does all of these startup tests and all of that wonderful stuff, which is obviously very good to know if it all passes that. So what we're going to do is get the overhead all set up and ready to roll. So we're going to get the RSs aligned, so just get this to on and on, on left and right. We want to get the cabin stuff all turned on, like IFE, uh, passenger seats, and basically to make the passengers welcome on our flight today. Battery can obviously go on, and the AP generators, they don't need to be on now. Oh, panic one button does both. Um, they don't have to be on now, because we don't actually have the AP running, but it should always be on anyway. Um, so we're just going to go down and through columns. So that column one is now done. Flight deck door power obviously needs to be on. And most of the lights can be down to armed. And then you can close off the guard. Window heat simply the backups on. We just need the primary ones left and right. Hydraulics can be left as is. And then our seat belts. Well, we haven't done our fueling yet, so they can stay off. All this lighting should be fine as default. Um, this is all to be left unless you want to do some tests um, this this page this page this column is basically you can just leave it all until the very bottom which is when you should have the nav light on I wish cold and dark states would always have the nav light on because basically when you have the night nav light on you're basically telling aircraft or people around you that you've got power basically you're running and you've got power but if you get rid of the power, then your nav light won't be on even though you've got the switch on. So that switch should always basically stay on, in my, in my uh, opinion. Anyway, up here, that, that, if you set cold and dark state and not your own state and not something weird, everything stand off, these should all stay as is. Recirculation fans should go on. Packs can go to auto. Trim air can go on. Ventilation yeah, should be on normal. If it's not, then open the garden so it's normal. And these should be an auto as well. And that is everything set on the overhead for now. Uh, I've edited my settings for this aircraft. Typically, it says IRS, like, time to align 60 seconds. I've changed it to, like, 7 minutes or so. You just click the info page down here, and you can go to the quality wings config. I've set it to 420 seconds for IRS align time, a bit more realistic, and... Uh, I think these are all of default. Go to miscellaneous. This can be useful for some people. So you can got night charts if you want. You've got flight plan overlay on the EFBs. Those are all your choice. I just leave these top three by default. So exclude Mr. Project waypoints. Just leave it all default. This is just basically this next setting is on your opinion. Do you want to kilograms or pounds? I come from the UK, so kilograms is my preference. I am not going to be doing pause at the top of descent. You can if you want. If you're going to do an overnight flight and you're scared you might not wake up in time, you can turn it on if you want, but I won't. Um, so that can go off. Panel autosave is very useful. So if your sim does decide to uh, bomb itself, um, then you can have that ticked. And when you reload the sim again, it will have the latest autosave. Uh, you won't have to restart your whole flight, which is good. Auto set climb is a, it's, a, it's a nice feature. It's a little weird on how it works exactly. I'll be showing you how to do that on part two of uh, of this video on 
how it actually works. It's different to how the PMDG auto set client works, but yeah, it, I prefer the PMDG auto set client compared to the Corona Twins. And cabin air temp unit, well, it's not just cabin air temp, it's any cabin or any air temp, obviously, degree Celsius for me. Uh, I do not run the FS2 crew. If you do, you click enabled. If you don't, then well, disabled. And uh, to get to the sounds page here, I have the announcements turned off, but everything else is left as default. I do not know what BA have as their callouts, so I just have it on default. Basically, all of them, which is very useful. This is basically your choice as well. Um, well, I'll leave everything on default other than this fourth setting here and that's basically if it's too bright at night or something you can just turn it down like so or if it's too too dark and turn it up and that's basically it you can save config there is other things you can do like approach configs and jump ahead jump ahead feature is kind of cool when you have a flight plan loaded you can jump to a certain waypoint jump to stop descent so if you don't want to wait in the cruise if you're one of those people who just want to do a long haul but without doing the time or waiting time, waiting game let's say then you can just jump ahead which is pretty cool if you're that type of person. Anyway, let's go back to CGU, you can clear off the uh, information down there and there we are. Because I'm going to be running GSX today, I'm going to get GSX uh, going. It says you need to set parking brake. Yes, I'm going to set my parking brakes. That's the parking brake just there and now I can go and get GSX up. I'm just going to request catering like so, and we're going to go for Cuisine Air. Handling by British Airways, lovely. So, there's two things you can start off. You can either go and dispatch your flight through the EFB, um, which is, well, it's not really dispatching it, it's just letting up the payload. So let's go and do that now, actually. So, what we've got for our payload, the sound has just gone, because that's what happens when you tab out the same with quality wings. Um, I'm just going to get the payload and fuel on my other screen. So, what you want to do is go down to here and your zero fuel weight. Click that box and then type up whatever it's got. So SimBrief has given me a zero fuel weight of 149.5 tons. You can come over here actually and I'll show you 149.5 tons. That is what we've got for our zero fuel weight today. And the same for the fuel, we'll get it from that flight plan and 44.1 tons is our fuel today. And you can see it's loaded up everything. Well, it's not loaded yet, it's just previewed it and what you're going to be having. And once you're happy with it, so we're going to have 169 people on board, uh, no, 159 people on board today. And uh, obviously the, the correct amount of fuel, 44.1 tons. Let's click set fuel tanks and set payload. Uh, there's also another thing which you can go and do. If you go and set up your flight plan first by going to ident, pause in it, and then setting your location. So we're at Heathrow right now. Just put that in there. And obviously once you've got the irises aligned up, uh, or lining up, you've got the GPS position, which you can go and put in there. And now you go to the route page. So this route page, if you go and route request, it will have your company routes, which you exported through Simbrief, which is very useful. Just click on it, and now you've got your whole route in here. You can go and enter this in manually. Um, if you know how to enter it in manually, then GG. If you don't, then you can... Well, it's basically you got a direct to waypoint, or you got an airway to the waypoint. Um, that's basically it. Obviously, when it's not filled out, it'll be like that. You put in whatever you need to do. Oh, didn't mean to click that. So once you've got this filled out, you would have a thing called QW Load Agent, and basically it calculates already. It it's a way of calcul of the quality wing, sorry, to calculate. But uh, I don't use that. I'm just gonna. I'm just using the Simbrief way of doing it. But if you don't have Simbrief or you, you want to use the quality wing's way of doing things, just click QW Load Agent and then click Load. Um, I don't want to click Load because I don't want to redo everything. But yeah, that's another way of getting up your fuel and payload. Okay. So, current winds. Oh, I don't know why that moved. Current winds at Heathrow are 260 at 22 knots. So, two sevens are the ones to go for. If I look at the real world, I can see what active runway they run because, because of COVID 19 at the moment. There's single runway operations at Heathrow. Uh, well, they change runway every week at the moment. And by the looks of things, it's 27 right. So, let's go and put in 27 right for our departure runway, like so. And that flight number can be whatever flight number it is or you have set up. For me, it's Vbird 22 Bravo. And you put that in the flight number part. 
activate and execute and that is your root set up let's go away from this page let's go to the legs page on the right side um yeah gsx is wondering about my doors let's go and open up the doors and the shift two and then right two door and then right four door and that open up the doors um for some reason gsx doesn't allow image rendering um so that's why my gsx vehicles do not have any images at all it's a shame, but yeah, that's the reason why they're they're blank. Same with the jetway. It should say HSBC, but yeah, for some reason it can't preview images sort. Of, well not preview, just show images in fact. So yeah. Nice uh busy Heathrow here at Terminal 5. So what I like to do next is set up the MCP and IFS and everything. Or EFIS, sorry. So by default it has the minimum set up. You don't want that on departure. Just click reset, like so, and that will clear out the minimum. And we're obviously in the UK, so we need to set hectopascals. So I'll switch off the barrow set to the right side. That is not synced, so you want to go and sync it up with the other side. And the same down here, for some reason it's in standard. It, actually, I think it goes to standard automatically when it's set to 1013. Um, 10, in fact, what is the QNH? It's 1014. So it's uh, 1010. Like so. Now we set the Q&H. So the actual Q&H setting is synced with all the three of the uh, displays, the PFD and the captain side and the FO side and standby. Um, but for some reason you actually have to set inches and hectopascals scales separately in each. That's fine. So once you've got that set up, your altitude should be uh, as accurate as possible. And then you can set up the MCP. I did say I want to set up the MCP, but we can't really do much um, with the speed at the moment. We can set the heading. The heading is basically your runway heading. So you want to set the heading of your runway. At Heathrow, 27 right uh, has a heading of 270 degrees. And our, well, initial climb is what you typically put into your altitude. Um, but at Heathrow, I'm not too sure on initial climbs. I'm just trying to look at it at my charts and my other display here. I can grab it. Here we go. Um, yeah, so it doesn't actually talk about initial climb. We'll just put 6,000, which is what I would guess to be what it should be. So you can actually switch between auto and 1,000, auto being increments of 100, and then 1,000 being increments of, well, 1,000. This is in feet as well. Okay. Right. GSX is mainly about closing up the doors, so we're going to close up those doors. And uh, we can go and request our boarding now. If you remember correctly, if you go back to the dispatch page, you can see how much people you've got on board. So I'm going to type in 159. My views is going to go and change there because my views are set to uh, numbers and when we type, it will change the view. Um, we're going to get the jetway to door to left, like so. Let's go back to that page. Um, so if you go to perfinite, which is the next page, automatically it like, gives you, it's filled out fuel and zero fuel weight. You want to go and set your reserve. Once again, you want to go back to sim brief. And if you scroll up, you have your final reserve here. Final reserve typically is about 30 minutes of flight time, uh, which has come out to be 2,039 kilograms. So just put two into that. Cruising out, once again, back to sim brief. And you scroll to your flight plan. And you can see that you're going to be initially climbing at well, I am going to be initially climbing at 380. It could be different for you. Make sure it is checked on your side. So for us, our initial cruise altitude is 38,000 feet. Cost index for BA is 15. If you have no idea, not 15 on the 787. Um, 25, sorry, not 15. Uh, if you don't know what it is, a standard we, you can probably set on the 787 would be roughly, I would say, 75-ish would be like a standard, more average, maybe 75, 50. Um, the shorter the route, the less it matters. The lower the cost index, the longer your flight. The higher the cost index, the shorter your flight, but the more fuel you'll burn. Step size, well, the aircraft can't really step itself. Um, I just leave it on zero because I'm going to put in the step climbs that Simbrief has calculated for me. So I'm just going to, have to execute that. You can see in the next page now, it's actually uh, put in the speeds and your flight 
levels, you can see we're going to be cruising at decimal 836. And before G6 gets mad at me again, that's going to open up the doors for it. So open up left two, forward cargo, and after cargo. And once those are all open, they'll stop flashing. So uh, there you go. All the doors are open. We should get passengers boarding soon. Right. Now I like to go onto the right side of the MC, uh, FMC. I like to keep it on this page so I can just keep flowing through uh, the setup. But I want to go to departure and arrival, and I want to go and plug in my departure out of Heathrow. So you want to go and click departure, of course, and uh, two 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 seven right, which is the well, it, actually if it arrays, it knows when we did our init ref, we put in two seven right, so it knows two seven right is the departure. And our actual departure we'll be taking will be the Compton 3 something, 3 Foxtrot departure. Like I said, you might be doing a different route to me. Double check your flight plan or charts if you own Navigraph charts or whatever charts you have um, for your correct departure. Um, it will be different unless you're flying the exact same route as me today. If you want to do a copy and paste of uh, the, the tutorial, then that's okay. Um, so that's now that in there, and you'll look like execute. So that's our departure in to uh, Compton, then our flight plan onwards uh, to Baltimore. Now, we want to go and collect route data. This is a new feature in the Quality Wings. Well, I think it's been in the Quality Wings since two updates ago. And you can request wind from Active Sky. So if you use Active Sky, you'll go and grab the wind from Active Sky, which is absolutely glorious. So, load that. Execute, and you can tell the wind data is zero hours old, which means yes, it has grabbed the newest wind data, and that will give us an accurate flight time or arrival time and fuel and everything at Baltimore. The way you want to see how much you arrive with is by clicking progress. You have your call sign and progress, and have your current waypoint or to go, and then the next after, and the destination. You can see we're going to be arriving at about 17:58 Zulu, which is uh, seven o'clock UK time for me and uh, with a 9.4 tons of fuel um, so obviously that's not below zero which is nice that's good to know and yeah that's how you can do it if you're going to be running on uh, on like cross the pond or running across the pond if you're going to be on like oceanic stuff and you have to do position reports then it's got a very nice feature when you click the progress page there's a position report and it has your position reports here Position reports are like, it's not really a 787 tutorial, it's like something else. Um, tutorial, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to go into this in too, de too, uh, too much detail, but it's nice to have your position report just there, which you can read out to the ATC. Right, let's continue on this side. Thrust limit. This is basically the part when you tell your engine how much power you want to give it on departure. Obviously, you can't just make it up in your head. You want something else. You want something to calculate it for you. And what better than an EFP? EFB, sorry. You want to go to performance on the EFB, and you want to click copy FMC data. That will grab everything it knows. Um, condition? Well, if you look outside, is it dry? Is it rainy? It is dry. It's just a bit cloudy, but it's dry. So I'll put in dry in there. Thrust. Uh, we want to set optimum and same with flat optimum. I think it only calculates um, flat five at the moment because uh, quality wings can't be. Uh, I guess they can't be asked to calculate or work out everything um, for flat settings. Just to have time, let's say. <laughs> so yeah, it's calculated it. Apparently, we're going to be doing a full full uh, toga. We've got seventy nine percent. Uh, by default on TPR here. Uh, so no D-rate is required and no select temp is required either. If you do get a D-rate and you do get a select temp, do not worry about how to input it if I'm not showing you how to now. Because all you have to do is click send output, send to FMC, complete, go over to your FMC and just click accept. And there's everything in there. Your CG might be wrong, so just click it and click it again and it'll update your CG to your actual center of gravity which is 20% which gives us a trim of 5 uh, we'll be setting that trim on our next part of the video and it's given us our V-speeds as well the winds will be in there everything will be filled out 
So now our FMC is fully set up, we can go back to the legs page on this side. I like to keep it on this page uh, until takeoff. And what we can go and do is go to the checklist and we can get the checklist started. So, pre flight checklist, we can just check oxygen. Um, ah, that's cool. It's the name of the, the, uh, the tutorial part. Um, oxygen's tested, so we can take that off. Flight instruments, well, they are up and running. You can tell we're actually at Heathrow, so that's running, that's good. I've seen set altimeters, that's good. And this is our before start checklist. So, we've got the fuel on board. We did that a while ago, so we can get the seatbelt signs turned on. Um, so, those are on. MCP. Well, let's go and set that up. So, as I said, we've got the heading and altitude and V2. V2. V2 is stands for your V2 speed, which is your, your speed that you can safely fly one engine after departure. That is 154 in our calculation. So, let's set 154 into here. I don't like the quality wings, the way it scrolls. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> there we go. 154. We've got the heading of the runway and we've got our initial climb. So that's ticked off. Takeoff speeds. Well, we're just going to go roll through the V1, V rotate, and V2, and that is 143. So that is our like if we go above that speed, we are not doing a red jet to takeoff. We will continue our takeoff if we're past that speed. Um, v rotate. Well, it is the speed that you rotate, which is 146, and V2, as I just said, is our speed or say speed of one engine departure or our slowest speed basically basically your slowest speed you can fly at which is 154 so that's our v-speed's gone through and that gives us our cv pre flight checklist completed a very nice feature in the quality wings which i want to go and switch off these displays so i can get the big nav on this side so i'm just going to click nd that will give us a big nd on this side and i'm going to go and put the checklist on this side and the, the taxi ticker briefing a very nice feature with the quality wings. If you scroll in enough, um, you get an airport map. Look at that. It's very nice. Sometimes they will be default and not correct, or you don't even have some. Uh, I might make a video on how to set up um, an airport map for your scenery. Um, so it's not default, or if you don't have one, then you'll get one. If you guys really want a video on how to get an airport map, I'm fairly certain there's already a video out there on how to set up an airport map for the quality wings, but uh, if you guys want me to make one, then I'm happy to do so. Uh, but basically on our taxi, we're going to be pushing back facing towards the west. Um, towards the north, sorry, not the west. I mean, like relatively, it's kind of west on the display, but whatever. It's actually north, and we'll taxi down this Bravo and then out to Alpha, and we'll taxi down Alpha to uh, 27 right, which is here. And we'll depart. So that's a simple taxi and the takeoff. Well, we'll just follow the SID uh, off to uh, off to the cruise. So that's our takeoff and taxi briefing done. Um, beacon light. Well, we're not going to turn it on just yet. That is fine. Don't need that at all at the moment. One last thing you can do with the uh, MCP is get the flight directors turned on, and your auto throttles can be armed, like so. You can arm L and B nav now. Sometimes it might, it won't, um, sometimes it will. I don't actually know off the top of my head the reason for why it doesn't arm or it does arm sometimes. But if it does, then that's fine. If it doesn't, then it's fine as well. <laughs> Basically, if you arm them now, um, they will, once after takeoff, once you pass your, if you go to the next page, once you pass your acceleration altitude, which for here, it's, uh, or in, in here, I guess, it's 1,500 feet, it will come out of your takeoff or toga. Um, setting basically runway heading and basically as fast as you climb and then into the NF and BNF stage of your uh, of your routes. Um, if you don't arm it, it will be able to arm after takeoff anyway, so it should be fine. Okay, so that's everything set up. Boarding's almost finished, so what we're going to do is set up our APU. So switch it to on, switch it to start, and then it will flick back to you on. Don't need to get the fuel pumps on, you can tell it's automatically going to grab fuel from the uh, the left aft pump there. And if we go to the system page and go to electrics, you can see the AP generator will be starting up. Once it is, once it is active, sorry, you can get rid of the external power. And like I said, once it's got the green arrows pointing down, you then remove the external power. Do not remove the external power when the APU is not running, because, well, you'll lose your power, <laughs> which is not good. You do not, do not want that to happen. 
Boarding wise, by the looks of things, we've just got the last pallet on the forward cargo and the after cargo seems to be uh, uh, completed there. We can actually go and shut up the, uh, shut up, <laughs> close up the left two door and the after cargo is done, we can close up that door too. So, that door's closing and this, uh, this pallet is just letting on now and I can hear, just about here, the APU is starting up in the background which is nice. These engines look like they're windmilling super fast. I mean, they are windmilling super fast. Look at them. I mean, 787, very efficient. I'd assume it's going to be really easy just to spin those engines, so... I guess that is uh, okay. So, once this has loaded up, we can go and request our pushback. And once everything's ready for pushback, I'll end the video and uh, you can go and watch part two. There we are, boarding completed, so we can close up the forward cargo, go back inside, and there we go, we can see APU is running, the generators are up, so what we can go and do is click external power, obviously a little bug in the quality things you can't tell, and the arrows are gone, which means you can safely remove external power without losing your power. So that can go back to the ND page, like so. Wheel chops can go and get removed, make sure your parking brake is set, and uh, we can go and request. Uh, pushback. Yes. Once you request pushback, if you've got a GSX jetway or a so jetway, it'll get rid of itself. If you've got Control J or default jetways, then make sure you click Control J to get rid of the jetway. Because you don't want to push back with your jetway uh, just like scraping against your fuselage. Uh, what I like to do is can now go and click Initialize Flight. I'm not too sure on what that exactly does in the aircraft, but it does something. It initializes the flight. Um, so GSX will get connected up, and now we can get the beacon light on. Because now we're going to be saying, "Oh, we're going to start our engine soon. We'll get our beacon light on. Uh, we're going to get ready for pushback." So that's our before start checklist completed. So there we are. We are now at the state of pushback and startup. That's the end of the pre-flight video. Or yeah, the pre-flight. In fact, yeah. Uh, video part number one for your quarter wing 787 video. I'll uh, push back north and I will see you in part number two, which will be the taxi takeoff and the climb to cruise part. So I hope to see you in part two. Hope you enjoyed the part one and hope you guys can fly the air. Uh, or hopefully, you can guys can get this all set up to how it is here. I'll see you in part number two. Ciao.